Ladies and gentlemen, what better way to get things going on the new Q95 FM but to have our resident pumpers come in to right. pump you up. Yeah, that's right. I am Hans. Uh, uh, it's about time you were here. I've been here while you've been on your big world tour. While you were hobnobbing with all the big stars of bodybuilding, I've been stuck here with a bunch of wimpy girly butts. Wait. <laughs> yeah, never mind that. I am back, and now it's time for us to pump... You are. Yeah. You know, here at the new QFM, we're making changes. Yeah. We found out you listeners thought the Z was a wimpy girly letter. Yeah. <laughs> that is right. Our research shows that Q is a much more muscular, manly letter. Really? A manly letter? What makes the Q so much more manly? Haven't you ever noticed that little dangly thing that hangs down? Wait a minute, Hans. <laughs> that is what right. What fun in your morning with the Goose people, the new Q. Yes, I'd like to speak with Mr. Grissom. Uh, who are you calling? Melfi Ford. Mel oh, Melfi Ford. Yeah, sure. Oh, me oh Mr. Grissom. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Mr. Oh, Mr. Grissom. Yes, Grissom here. Uh, lady on the phone for you. Yeah, go ahead, ma'am. Hello. Yes. Yes, it's Grissom. Is this Melfi Ford? Yes, it is. <laughs> this is Mr. Grissom. Oh, Grissom. Oh, no, this is Mr. Grissom. Uh, Mr. Grissom's in the in a meeting right now. Can I help you? Um, well, my husband wanted to speak with them. Mm-hmm. Maybe well, you can talk to him. Sure, I can take the call. Hello? Yes. Hey, this is uh, Abby Bledsoe. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to come by and bring my car out. I'm Mr. Grissom there? Uh, he's in a meeting right now. I'm Mr. Grissom. We work uh, together. I can uh, well, I can help you. What's uh, What seems to be the problem? Uh-huh. Oh, well, I'd rather talk to him. I can take care of you, you know. We here at Mel Far Ford, service is our middle name. Mel Service Ford. Far. Mel S. Ford, isn't it? Yeah, Mel S. Ford. Mel S. Ford. Mel Service Sir, Far. Sir, I guess what he's asking is, what's the problem with the car? Hmm? Huh. What is the problem with the car? Not the problem with the car. That's what uh, the whole thing is. Well, this is kind of personal. Oh, oh it's, it's personal. Oh, it's personal. So I'll give you a number and you can have him call me back as quick as you can. Okay, give me, give me a number. 864. Okay, that's 846-864-684-864. Okay, okay, we'll have him call you. 22. Two. Oh, wait a minute. 228 two, eight. Eight, Wait a minute. I'll start all over. Yeah, okay. you better do that. Okay, let's, let's start again. Hi, Melfire Ford. Okay. Oh. Is this Mr. Grizzen? No, this is Mr. Grizzen. Uh, so give me your number again. It's 228. Two, eight. No, no, it's 864. Two okay. two six eight. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Eight. Yeah. I've got eight. Eight six four. Wait a minute. Don't go so fast. <laughs> All right. Eight eight eight. Uh, six was next, right? Right. Okay. And then uh, four. Two. No, it was two four. fours. I believe it was four, wasn't it, sir? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Wait a minute. Eight. Okay. Four eight six four. Right. 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 Okay. okay, and we'll be in touch with you then. You know, I have the number. How can you be in touch with me? Oh, See, I'm sorry. You two. didn't finish. Okay. Two, two. Are you stuttering? What? How many twos? You got the eight, six, four? Yes, how many twos? Two, two. Two, two? Mm-hmm. Okay, how do you spell that? Spell what? Two, two. <laughs> Now, you see, uh, Mr. Grissom? Yes. Uh, I think we just lost our caller there, I believe. Well, yeah. what good's that going to do? I haven't got his number. Yeah, that is a shame. We never got the number. Well, well maybe he'll call back. Well, uh, good morning, Dick. Ronald Reagan, sports commentator on the new Q95 FM. Nice to hear from you, Mr. Former President. And what is your sports commentary about this morning, Dutch? Well, I've got my NFL outlook. Ah, believe it or not, the NFL season began over the weekend with the first few exhibition games being played. Well, I'm totally opposed to exhibitionists playing football. What? <laughs> it might be fun for the crowd to see those naked players, but... No, no, Dutch, Dutch... Dangerous without any equipment. Uh, sir? It's really tough on the center. Yeah, <laughs> sir, sir... <laughs> sir, exhibition games are not played by exhibitionists. Oh, that's right. Their sport is volleyball. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a lot of truth to that. That is one of the big games at nudist camps, sir. You're right. Oh, uh, which one do you go to? No, 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 sir. I, I don't go to the camps. Uh, Nancy and I like Camp Lotta Tush. Do you? <laughs> it's near Fresno. Is it near Fresno? It's good, sir. <laughs> sir. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sir, what about the Lions this year? Well, 
I pick them for the Super Bowl. You do? How do you, how do you figure that, Dutch? Well, they've got a new stretch offense, and the idea of the Lions winning the Super Bowl is really stretching it. <laughs> Boy, that's for sure. Thank you for calling, uh, Mr. Former President. Uh, okay, Dick. Uh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, all right, Nancy. Let's try some short passes. I'll go down to the coffee table and then hook back to the bookcase. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with the election tomorrow, our editorial board here at the Z thought it was important for you to hear one last debate between the candidates. Both parties turned down our offer about the top men, but have agreed to the two vice presidential candidates. So on the line with me now are Senator Benson and Senator Quayle. Welcome, gentlemen. Hi, Mr. Perton. This won't take too long, will it? I got an early tea time. Kennedy hated golf. He did not. Dick, you promised. That's right, Senator Benson. You did agree not to use the K word. Uh, Sorry, I haven't had my prune juice yet. Uh That's not myself. That's right. Gentlemen, what about the issues? I'm glad you brought that up. I was just reading an old issue of Golf Digest here. No, not those issues, Senator. Uh, What are your parties going to do about, for example, taxes? Uh, I think we'll carry taxes. No. After all, I'm the senator here. I know you. Why did you mess up? He said taxes. Did not. Did too. Did not. Yeah, you're no Lyndon Johnson. What the hell are you talking about? I finally got your back. Nee, 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 nee. You know, Kennedy had a bad back. He did not. Did too. Gentlemen, did not. gentlemen, let's talk about your chances now of winning, all right? I've got my Z lottery ticket right here. No, no. my number, I got a real good shot. No, Senator Quayle. I meant the election. Mm, haven't had one of those in years. No, 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 Senator Quayle. <laughs> he had them all the time. That's why he was fooling around. He was not. It was too. Yeah. Hey, Gary Hart looking like a unit. All right, gentlemen, thank you for being here, and have a good day. Senator Benson, Bye-bye. Senator Quayle. This is George Bush. Good morning, Dan. No, it's Dick, Mr. Vice President. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, it's been a couple of days now since your confrontation with Dan Rather, and it looks as though it has helped you politically. I want to put all of that behind me. I have no hard feelings against that jerk. Well, the other side of the coin, Mr. Vice President, is the question now of a press conference now, I that was raised by that interview. seven press conferences I mean, Do in the you past plan to weeks? have a former I press conference before the Iowa primary? To we're once and for them, all, clear up this question of exactly what your involvement, involvement was or your non-involvement was in the Iran Contra Arms scandal. There are a House lot of Republicans issues. who feel that I mean, you still you haven't answered all of the questions that should be cleared up. Don't you think a full disclosure would end all of the controversy over your position? I'm going to tell my mom. She doesn't think I'm a wimp. Thank you for clearing up a few things, Mr. Vice President. Glad to help, Dan. Dick. Same to you. I know, Bagman, you are upset about Saturday night not being invited on that cruise, but... uh, Not at all. (laughs) Your name uh, just never came up. It was one of those things, you know. Not at all. Mm -hmm. I was not the least, but that was one of those society things. Well, you know, it was... I tell you, we had a good time down there, but the point is this. I haven't had much luck with cruises. Uh, Emceeing things and cruises. The last thing that I emceed on a uh, ship was a beer-chugging contest on an Exxon oil tanker. (laughs) (laughs) About five, six weeks ago, and it just, you know... (laughs) It just didn't work out for me. Well, as a matter of fact, I went to a high society thing on Sunday, and you weren't there. What, what did you go to? That was the uh, helmet protest with all my uh, fellow bikers. Oh, yeah. That was down uh, at Hart Plaza, wasn't it, that or something? And then you guys Kennedy rode your Square. choppers out to uh, out Heinz to Park. Heinz Park. That's that right. That's correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I have, was so inspired by that, I wrote a poem. You have a poem? Another poem. All right. <laughs> this all right. I will dedicate to the ladies of Harley, all right. who are my biggest fans. I see them in your Easy Writers uh, my, uh, magazine that you get there. That is correct. How come those girls don't wear any clothes ever? <laughs> those motorcycles are very expensive. They're also very cold, aren't yes, they? I mean, well, you, sit down in that leather. Well, they, no, no, no. They have some of the, There's fur on the seats. Somewhere. Oh, there is. I see. Oh, that explains it. Okay, see? fine. Some of them... <laughs> Okay, what do we have uh, for us here, though? Come on, Bagman. Bagman. It's Why am I talking to you? He's the one that's laughing. He, he is the one. Ankle. He is the one who... Ankle. What, Bagman? He's the one who won't play my music. He's the one that won't play your music? Yes. Oh, the the poetry music. Yes, of course, yes. Uh, if you will just press the button, Ankles, please. Okay. Thank you. As I hop on my chopper and head for downtown. I know that my bros will all be around. Spiders out of jail. (laughs) His old lady. Excuse me, I'm sorry, we missed that last line. (laughs) Spiders out of jail? Spiders out of jail. Yeah. (laughs) We have a problem here. We have a problem because uh, 
We can't understand what you're saying. He's ruining my concentration, Mr. Pritchard. Ankles, if you just settle down, why don't you turn and face the other side? Good okay? idea. Why don't you go in another room? Do I have to face the corner? Spider's out of jail. His old lady's a fox. <laughs> yeah. My main man, Scuzzle. Yeah, what about him? What about Scuzzle? He's out of detox. He's out of detox? Oh, that's good. We're yeah. against helmet laws. After all, these are our heads. Why should you worry if on the road they get spread? It's a matter of choice, feeling wind in our hair and spending the rest of our lives in intensive care. We should be free to bear our heads riding on top of our scooters. And our girlfriends shouldn't even have to cover their hoops. <laughs> Well, I don't believe you did that one back then. I don't believe you did that. Oh, this is uh, questionable. Get out of here. When you hop on a Harley, you want to live free or die. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. And without wearing a helmet, we may get to try. <laughs> Cowboy Jim on the line from our sister radio station, G95.5 in Grand Rapids, uh, the world's only part-time religious, part-time Las Vegas radio station. How's it going up there, Jim? Well, Dick, that's why I called. We've changed formats again. What? We're dropping the Vegas format. We're going country. The Vegas music didn't work? Well, our research showed us that the audience had trouble telling Vic Damone's smooth music from Buddy Greco's dynamite voice. <laughs> Really? Boy, I can understand why that could be a problem. So you went into, like, country slash religion. Right you are, Dick. Every other song is country. Oh. Now you can hear him and the voice of God, then hear a hit to slop your hogs. <laughs> right. Okay, well, good. Listen, <laughs> Jim, Jim, are you playing all types of country music? Well, Dick, most of them have some kind of religious message, uh -huh. uh, just to keep everything consistent. Sure, I, I can understand. For example... Well, one of my favorites is John Denver. Thank God I'm a country priest. <laughs> okay, that's good. And what else is hot up there at G95.5 Grand Rapids? Take our research shows, and we get a lot of requests for, since my woman left, it's just me, my dog, and the Lord. <laughs> me, my dog, and the Lord. That's right, big hit up here. Well, that, that's, that sounds like a nice tune, Jim. That's right, and that's on the flip side of when my pickup truck gets a flat, I got Jesus to spare. <laughs> Right. Okay, Jim, I think you may have really latched onto something here. I think we do too, Dick, and as we say here in the G, keep the Lord within you and you'll be calm because next we've got Alabama doing musical songs. Okay, Jim, we'll talk to you soon. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just keep it on the G and you'll never be bored. Ten to two, hope you join us, won't you? Hey, Dick, how you doing? Hello, bud. <laughs> got some jokes here for you. All right, bud, let's hear them. Yeah, my brother-in-law spent New Year's Day taking a cow to the police station. Taking a cow to the police station? Yeah. Why? He says he saw her wandering aimlessly in a field and recognized her picture from the side of a milk cart. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I'm about it. Yeah, I got another one here for you. What's that? Did you hear what Minnie Mouse gave Mickey for Christmas? No, what? A Danny Quail watch. <laughs> <laughs> so long, bud. Wait a minute, one more here for you. All right, wrap it up with this one. Yeah, this man found a bear on his roof. This man found a bear on his roof? Yeah. Yeah. And called the Bear Removal Service. Yeah, sure. Guy shows up with an apple, a dog, and a gun. Yeah. He says, I'll climb that tree and dangle the apple in front of the bear. Yeah. When he lunges, he'll fall to the ground, the dog will bite him between the legs, It'll take off for good. Okay. Guy says, pretty clever, but what's the gun for? He says, if I fall out of the tree, shoot the dog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so long, bud. Come on. Oh. Well. Kind of a shocker that I called, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. Hey, oh, this... this is the grandfather of rock and roll. Yes. Uh, good morning, King. I guess congratulations are certainly in order. Well, thank you, Dick. You know, I'm, I'm just sitting here looking at these black velvet baby pictures. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I can't help but notice a family resemblance with myself and little Elvis Sutter. Elvis Sutter? <laughs> nothing official yet, Dick. That's just my suggestion. I see. They don't have to name it that. Uh-huh. Unless I want to stand my gravy train for a few more years. <laughs> I understand. Sure. Well, looking at the baby pictures, can you see a resemblance, King? I sure can, Dick. You know, she's got my eyes. Uh -huh. got my curly lip. Oh, yeah. And unfortunately, she's also got my sideburns. <laughs> oh, does she? Well, are you going to be visiting your daughter uh, up there in the hospital? No, Dick, you know, if I don't want to know, it'd cause a big scene and everybody's sure. screaming, the king is here and everybody's running. Green, uh, he's in the building there and all that, sure. King? Get it? King? Get it?
Do you have a song? <laughs> a matter of fact, I do. Dick, oh, I got a right. lullaby for a little hell A little granddaughter of yours. All right, well, let's hear that song, King. Hello, Santa, little girl. You look a lot like me. You've got sideburns, a curly lip, and a pot belly. <laughs> don't take drugs and don't you drink. Listen to C. Everett Coop. And don't expect Granddad to change your diapers when they're... <laughs> okay, very good, King. Thank you so much, King. Have a good day. <laughs> A big big vote for me As your next president I lower taxes, make my jobs And in the devil said, oh, let me be The president You don't want to vote to caucus Cause you won't take a stand You don't want to vote for Bush Cause you never heard of Iran Contra scam I'm the one who you be. You're the president. I clean the Pentagon and see where the money went. Oh, let me be. The president. A baby, vote for me. The king is where it's at. Republicans have had the shot. Who needs such Democrats? No crappy geeks or little Greeks. President, I can vote the farmers, I'll eat their surplus crops, I'll bust the drug dealers, and buy donuts for the local cops, on November 8th, remember what I said, I'll be more fun to watch, even though I'm dead, I wanna be, and now Wendell Ledbetter putting things in perspective. Wendell? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Yesterday, Geraldo presented an entire TV show on nudity. I didn't watch it, of course, because it would have meant missing the 9 to 10 a.m. portion of your program. Well, thank you, Wendell. But I did catch the first two minutes of Geraldo's new show, uh, you know, while you were playing that Prince record? Oh, yes, uh-huh. And I couldn't help but wonder while I was watching Geraldo's show on nudity, why is there no H in Geraldo? <laughs> you wondered that while watching the nudity show? That's correct. Uh -huh. But there have been other TV shows about nudity, like the Japanese miniseries, Show Off Your Gun. <laughs> Uh, well... Proponents of nudism say nudity is natural, like eating, or sleeping, or setting fire to cats. <laughs> Wendell? Some people run in the nude. Some people do housework in the nude. And some people even camp circles in the food with the hunger in the nude. <laughs> I guess it's just a matter of convenience. Apparently it is. Nudity makes people more kind toward each other. Imagine if World War I had been fought in the nude. <laughs> At least we'd be seeing a lot more old war movies on late night TV. <laughs> on cable, anyway. Yeah. Nudity goes back to biblical days, <laughs> does it? In fact, Adam met Eve in a nudist camp. <laughs> oh, really? Adam would run around with only a fig newton. Uh, I believe you mean a fig leaf, Wendell. No, a fig newton. It stuck better. <laughs> but it didn't really matter. I mean, who was going to see him? Just the Lord, and he's used to that kind of thing. Sort of like doctors. Sure, that's true. Yeah. George Washington was a nudist. He was? Yeah. That's why on the dollar bill, they only show him from the neck up. <laughs> see, the things you learn, huh? That's right. Even Pinocchio was a nudist. Oh, yeah? That's right. You see, everyone thought it was his nose that was... Oh, okay, that's one lot better. You're putting things in perspective. You're welcome. <laughs> morning, Dick. Is your agent Sauer on tour with the Detroit Symphony? Well, hello. Good morning, Sauer. How's it feel to be back in the good old U.S. of A.? Well, how would I know? I'm here in England with the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> well, Sal, the orchestra arrived back here yesterday. That would explain it. Explain what, Sal? Why, nobody showed up for rehearsal this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sal, how could he get left in England when everybody else made it back with no problem? I should never have partied with Chuck and Di after the last concert. Uh -huh. Boy, what a couple of animals. Really? I was going to leave by 1 a.m., but when Chuck pulled out his Weird Al Yankovic CDs, I couldn't help myself. I see what you mean, sure. Prince Charles is a big fan of classical music, Sal. In fact, I understand he's a cellist. 
He's got no reason to be jealous of me. No, no. I and I are just good friends. Okay, fine. No, Sal. Cellist. You know, cello. I guess you're right, Dick. There's always room for jello. No, no, no. I said cello. Hello, Dick. <laughs> this is your agent, Sal, on tour of the Detroit Symphony Orchestra in Europe. How's the connection there? <laughs> Bye, Sal. What would you like me to buy, Dick? I'm no. going through the duty-free shop service. <laughs> no, 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 Sal. Goodbye. Well, they're all goodbye. You get a watch for date. In fact, I can bring you back some sexy French postcards for nothing. From the duty-free shop? No, Dick, right next to it. They've got a dirty-free shop. <laughs> I'll talk to you when you get back, Sal. What? Good morning. This is Dick Parton from z 95 Yeah, this is Dick. How y'all doing? This is Di. Di? Yeah, Di, like Diana. You know, I marry Prince Charles here in England with the clowns and all that stuff. Wait a minute, this is Lady Diana, the uh, wife of Prince Charles? That's right. What are you talking about? I know you be asking yourself, like, why is this lady calling me out and stuff? Yeah. I said to myself, you know, the that dick partner, he's got, like, such a great show, and he played like Madonna and Lionel Richie, you know. Well, I know I do, and it sounds like a long-distance call here, guys, doesn't it? It's a little uh -huh. bit, I, I don't know. Well, it's the, well, die, I don't I mean, it's nice of you to call. Forgive me if I sound surprised. I just haven't heard you speak much, and you don't sound very English. Well, you know, Charles, he always be telling me, girl, what's the matter with you? Damn, I wouldn't have married you if I know you talked like Whippy Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it must have been quite a... I'm, no, I'm surprised. It must have been quite a surprise for Charles. Uh -huh, yeah, I'm surprised, you know. I've been saving myself for some royal dude, you know. Yeah. And then, like, we get married, and I said, well, man, I'll save myself for this. You saved yourself for this. Yeah, well, l well Lady Di, let me ask you this question. Pe up? People Magazine had a big article about you and Fergie. That's right, they did. You know, you were some people, too. Yeah, I was. And yeah. I said, boy, you know, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> <laughs> you, look, you look like a nightmare, you know. Uh -huh, yeah, well... It was kind of a bad picture, Di. See, I was talking about the article with you and people when, when you and Fergie were poking people in the behind with umbrellas at the races. Uh huh. That ain't no thing. We were just having fun. You know, we got to have some kind of fun. Then this dude, you know, he started taking pictures and stuff. Ain't that rude? Well, yeah, that was over at Ascot. What's that? That was at Ascot. Well, you know, that's why I said to Fergie, I said, Chuck sees these pictures, you know, my ass got in a flame. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lady Di, uh -huh. I thank you for calling and call back any time. All right, well, bye-bye and cheer you on all that stuff. You know yeah, okay, so long, Di. Bye. Hello? Uh, yeah, is this Miss Rossi? Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Anthony, Anthony Barbuza calling from Farmer Jack, Miss Rossi. But... Yes. About your party, your party trays? Yes, yes. What did you order on there? Just, we want to double check on it. Okay, I ordered, uh, famous deluxe trays. Famous Deluxe. Yeah, I ordered that for 40 people. 40 people. Uh, 40 people. And I ordered two of the uh, shrimp trays. Two shrimp trays? Yes. Now, I wanted potato salad. One potato salad? One potato salad and one coleslaw. One coleslaw? You have that? Yep. Okay. And I picked out a whole bunch of different breads with her. Uh, do you want any chips? No. No chips? No chips. Okay. I, I want only what, what comes with the, the tray. Okay. Two shrimp uh, trays, one potato, and two coles uh, one coleslaw. What, are they putting this on two trays? Yeah. We thought we'd give you two trays. Okay. Yeah. So you... put, put potato salad on one tray and coleslaw on the other. Okay. One potato salad on one tray, one coleslaw on the other. Right. What else do I have there? Uh, that's just it. I don't know. That's my problem. You don't know. The girl took the order. No, I haven't got it in front of me. I'm just double-checking. Well, how can you double check it if you don't have the order in front of you? Well, the point is, ma'am, that just temporarily I haven't got the order in front of me, so I'm asking you to give me the order so when I get to the order I can double check it. The famous deluxe. Yeah, this is this comes out to the famous deluxe. We got two trays though, so we got one famous deluxe on one tray, one famous deluxe on the other tray. Right. Okay, total of forty people. Yes. All right, now. Also in addition to the shrimp and uh, the potato salad and the coleslaw and so forth. We got in time for the Christmas season. We got uh, we're going to put these elements on there. We got a uh, some live lobster. We're going to put on there. Uh, we got some stuffed reindeer. We got uh, some curried llama, some candied yak. Uh, we've got a little bit of uh, the Limburger cheese, which uh, somebody said you guys wanted, and also we want. Uh, no, no, I didn't order any of that. No, 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 you didn't order. I know you didn't order, but this is a little special bonus we put on your trays. Oh. Okay. At Christmas time. So what we do basically, we cut down on the shrimp, we cut down on the coleslaw, we cut down on the potato salad, and we give you the additional, the curried llama, the candied yak, and the uh, shrimp octopus flambe. Yeah, but I don't think I want that. Well, uh... I'd rather go with just all shrimp. Well, see, we can't do that. We can't do, go with all shrimp at the price quoted. Why? 
Because, because we gave you a, ch a cut rate uh, price on that. And the cut rate price includes the special holiday fair that I've just been telling you about. No, the tree is twenty six ninety. Right, you can't get a whole full a tray full of uh, shrimp for twenty six dollars ninety cents. Yeah, but that's what the the package shows. That's what the price she gave me. Well, but you understand, we've got some other. We got we got we we put other stuff no, on there. I don't there. want anything else. I want what I ordered, and the price I was quoted at was twenty six ninety, and I have the portfolio in front of me. All right, I tell you what we'll do. We'll throw in a couple of extra tins of baked beans. No, I don't want beans. I want shrimp. What's wrong with beans? These are holiday beans. I the, don't want beans. These are these I are. I ordered shrimp. Are you the manager? I want to speak to the manager. I am the manager. Well, what the hell is going on? That's Look, not what I ordered. Do you understand something? I want two shrimp trays. That's what I ordered. This, That's what I want. We're going to give you two shrimp trays. We're going to give you all this other junk on top of it. You understand that? The, the, the... No, you were just telling me you're cutting it. I don't want to cut down on the shrimp. Do you want to cut the cheese down? I didn't order cheese. I want well, cheese. You know, you're going to get some cheese. What the heck is going on here? We're going to we're, we give you cheese because people like cheese at holiday parties. We've been in the business for years. We know exactly what people like at parties. How many parties have you been to when you heard some guy come up to the table and say, What, no curried yak. llama? I don't want yak and I don't want octopus. I want shrimp. How can you say? Are you not a fish lover? Haven't you read about cholesterol studies? People are supposed to eat fish and less meat. I want two trays of shrimp. That's what I ordered. That's what I want. We've been in the business for years, madam. I don't madam. care. We know what people want at the holiday I fair. I don't care. Let me tell you something. You get your candy yak, you get your curried lamb out there, and the people are going to be falling down trying to get to the table. Is that so? That is so. I've been in the catering. I don't believe this. I've been, I, listen, I mean, you could call me Farmer Jack himself. I've been in the business so long. Why are you telling me what to order? Because I don't understand this. For twenty six, what? Speak to somebody else, please. For twenty six dollars. I want to speak to somebody. Else. How many shrimp do you think you can I get for twenty six? I my order yesterday, and they told me that my order was set. What are you giving me this crap for? You want crap? We'll give you crap. We got candied crap. We got curried crap. What is? What is your name? We got crap what coming on our name? ears. Huh? But no chips. What is your name? My name is Anthony Barbarossa. I'd like to speak to him. I am. You're talking to Anthony. This is me. I want what I ordered, all right? I am the manager. I don't want no substitutes. I want what I ordered. I want nothing different, all right? Now, look, let me tell you something. I've been in the catering food business for years, I okay? I don't care. I know what the hell people want to eat. I don't care. At the annual I know Christmas. what I want. I know what I ordered. You're getting your shrimp. You're getting your potatoes. You're getting your coleslaw. And that's all I want. You Thank you. You're getting all that. We're throwing all this stuff in extra for you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, uh, Lisa? What? This is Anthony again. Yeah. We got disconnected. No, I hung up on you because I'm coming there right now and I'm going to see what's going on okay, here. Okay, then let's wrap up the conversation before you come over. That's great. That's ideal. That's wonderful. No, I'm coming there right now because I don't know what line of sh you're giving me, buddy, but I don't care for it. All right, listen. I'm going to talk to your top manager there. Dad, no problem here. You can see my boss. I'll give you his name. You want his name? Yeah, I want his name. All right. All right. His name is Stu. Just ask for Stu. Stuart? Stu, yeah. Stu is my boss. Yeah? No, I like it. I just talked to Stu. I just said, Stu, what can we do for this lady? She's obviously upset. In addition to all the goodies I'm offering here, we're going we're gonna to give you something else. That's what I said. What can we give her? He says, throw in some deep-fried watermelon. So I don't want that. What is your problem? We're gonna th These are watermelon balls. You Have you ever seen them? them? Deep-fried watermelon balls. They are wonderful. Want them. I want what I ordered. Damn and it. We'll what the hell is the problem? And Stu is going to... Uh, Did Stu? you tell her about the table dancers, eh? Do you want any table dancers? Hello? Lisa? I think we're in trouble. Not Lisa. again. <laughs> <laughs> MNC Services? Yeah, Le Lisa Rossi, please. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> She's not taking any calls. Tell you what. It's real important. I gotta talk to her. This is the last time. All right, just a minute. Okay. What do you want? Lisa? Yes! Before you hang up again, this is Dick Pertner, WCZY, Z95.5. Oh my God, I don't believe this. <laughs> What are you doing calling me? You know how mad you got me? Good. You had me running off to Farmer Jack's <laughs> office house. My boss, Stu's here. No, oh my God, I don't believe it. Hey, Lisa, it. how you doing, eh? Hey, I'm fine now. That's good. Does this mean you don't want the table dancers? No. <laughs>
Well, then I'll keep them. <laughs> I don't believe this. Uh, did you want the fried watermelon balls? I don't want the fried watermelon balls. <laughs> okay, we'll cancel them. Everything else is in your order. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. So long, Lisa. Bye-bye. <laughs> That's Imelda. Now Ferdinand has no feelings. He's very talented. <laughs> in most of his body. One foot is in the grave. <laughs> Peace times. They make almost as much money. They are a little taller, taller, a bit more honest too, too. <laughs> Peace, Don, and Ferdinand are bad boys. They're both misunderstood boys. They both want to be loved. That's not too much to ask, is it? He's dust. And 30 are successful. They know the way to win is to kill you with their guards. <laughs> <laughs> I want a pair of new shoes. Sing it, Imelda. Sandals or some loafers. <laughs> loafers. Or even some croquettes. <laughs> or maybe a little pump. Peace, <laughs> Dunst. And Ferdy are success. Full. The music? <laughs> I hate to say this. The music ran out. What a shame that was. Well, okay, there is uh, the Bagman along with Imelda Marcos, and they recorded live. You ought to see the video of this. Really? I'll bet oh, it's we wonderful. We did it at a Foot Locker. And it's it uh, fabulous. All right, good. And there, there they are doing the Imelda Marcos version along with the Bagman of Felix. Thank you. We pre appreciate that very much. That is all right. And remember, that is a C95. Yes, it is. World exclusive. Thank you, Bagman. Thank you, Imelda. Oh, you're so welcome, Dick. <laughs> Mary Young uh, is with us again to talk about the discrepancy now between the number of fires the fire department says happen and the number of the mayor's office says were set on uh, Halloween and Devil's Night. You, you know, Dick, I think the damn media is making too much out of this minor dis 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 discrepancy, dis sir. Discrepancy. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> Why? Why is that? Well, what's a few fires between friends? Well, now, Mr. Mayor, the fire department said there were 412 fires over three days. Uh -huh. Your office said 223. That's more than just a few. Well, Dick, I think it's all in the way you look at a fire. Oh, really? For example, did you see uh, Gone with the Wind? Of course. Well, you know that scene of Sherman's burning of Atlanta? Yeah, the entire city was left in ruins. Well, right? yeah, but that's not the point. What is the point? The point is, we only count that as one fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, sir, you criticized, and these are your words, the Lily White leadership of the Firefighters Union. <laughs> you did say that, didn't you? Yeah, I can be an eloquent mother when I want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you can, but that, that, that's not the point. I mean, don't you think that kind of talk is antagonistic? You're taking that out of context, Dick. Oh, really? You see, I was quoting a Revolutionary War general when he... He told his black troops, don't start the fires until you see the eyes of the whites. <laughs> oh, really? Or something like oh, that. Oh, that was in Boston there. Yeah, yeah so Breed's Hill, Bunker Hill. Yeah, that's it. Well, uh, all right, stick around if you will, sir. I'm sure we we'll want to talk to you more about this. Okay, okay Dick, but I've got some uh, campaigning to do today. Sure. And I'm uh, burning daylight. You are burning daylight. That's right, yeah. That's an old John Wayne expression. I know it is. Yeah, thank you.
Good morning. It's the Dick Burton Show. Get out and stay out! And a big how do do to you. Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to have you with us. Welcome to a Wednesday, the seventh day of October. This is your friend and his dick with you between now and 10 o'clock. Good morning, Ankles. How are you today? Nice to have you with us. Five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> There's a cutting crew. Why, it's good to begin with a laugh. I always say the cutting crew does. I've been in love before. Good morning, Mr. Burton. Oh, dear. This is Mr. Rogers with another word for the day. Good morning, Mr. Rogers. And what is your word for today? My word for the day is linger A. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, I think the word you're talking about is lingerie. Hmm? What? Hmm? <laughs> it means. It means. It means. Can't you tie? You choked up, Mr. Rogers. I know what it means. It means nightgowns and sexy underwear. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> you know, Mr. Rogers, I'm getting pretty sick of you coming up with disgusting words of the day. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but the way you do it. You know, one day you had fetish. T today you've got lingerie. Oh, dear neighbor. I think you've made a mistake. What? I said linger a. You mispronounced it. I don't think so, neighbor. Let me use my word in a sentence. Okay, good. <laughs> After we go shopping in Windsor, let's stop for a warm beverage. We don't have to go right back. We can linger, eh? <laughs> I see, Mr. Rogers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misunderstood your 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 obvious good intentions. Sure, you did. Uh huh. And while we're lingering over our beverage, uh -huh. maybe we can talk one of the girls into a table dance. Mr. Rogers. I think it goes to charity. Goodbye, Mr. Rogers. And you say bonjour, Monique? <laughs> I know. Dick, our Stranger on the Shore Festival has become so popular, we're going to add something special today. And what is that, Casey? A celebrity Stranger on the Shore. Yeah. And here's our celebrity. Joe Carcioni Jr. Well, this is a real wow. treat. Good morning, Dick, and good morning, everybody. It's so nice to be here in person. Joe, I suppose I should introduce you. This is the bag man. That's Hi, Colleen. Mm -hmm. Doc is over in the corner. Mm -hmm. You know, Doc, donuts, certainly, absolutely, no patoo. <laughs> you know, what was that, please? You know, Doc. No, no patoo? <laughs> <laughs> donuts contain absolutely no potassium. Uh-huh, good. And this is Ankles over here. Hey, how's it going, eh? Oh, you know, Ankles, beer is a valuable source of fat gut. You're too kind. Yeah, Joe, can we get to your version of Stranger on the Shore? And now, Dick, here's my special guest, Joe Cargione, doing his version of Stranger on the Shore. All right, Junior. Thank you, Casey. There's a celery on the shore, <laughs> and it's a lovely stalk. How did you get here, little celery? <laughs> if only you could talk. What else do I see upon the shore that may give me a clue? I see a few potatoes. So tasty an Irish stew. <laughs> Someone was on the beach, I think, to have a picnicy, and knocked their picnic basket over when they tried to have a quickie. <laughs> I see veg tables everywhere, scattered about the sand. If I could see this every day, I'd open a produce stand. <laughs> I see another stranger there. She's where well, she's wearing a bikini. <laughs> a bikini. <A> bukini? <laughs> bikini, yeah. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. Excuse me, miss. I wonder if you dropped your zucchini. <laughs> and now I see her boyfriend running toward me at a frantic pace. I think that he's going to kick some sand right in my face. <laughs> Don't attack me, sir. I'll tell police, and you'll be a felon. And, by the way, Ask your girl if she also dropped a melon. <laughs> he grabs me now, and I finally know how a veg table really feels. Because this goon buried my face down in the sand, up to my heels. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Joe Carcioni Jr. You're welcome, Dick. This is Joe Carcioni Jr., your green grocer, reminding you, never gesture with your finger on the beach. Someone will mistake it for a gross point at the shore. <laughs> Hello, could I help you? Yes, uh, I'm calling in reply to your ad in the Oakland Press for a uh, secretary. Yes, we are looking for a secretary with about a five-year legal background. Uh, we have a general practice here. What is your background like? I have eight years' experience as legal secretary. Mm -hmm. uh, I type about uh, 90 words per minute, take shorthand, 
Uh, I've done quite a, a bit of work uh, in in the courts, uh, no court procedures. Uh, gosh, I don't know. I'm, I'm a non-smoker. You're a non-smoker. We are looking for one of those. Oh, good. All right. Let me tell you a little bit more about the position. We have seven attorneys here, and each has a uh, different practice, and they each would either be from personal negligence to um, product liability to malpractice. Mm -hmm. That goes to domestic relations, probate. Uh, corporate, that type. It's a general practice. Mm -hmm. um, we have three full-time secretaries, and we operate on a full-time basis. Now, all of the attorneys, are they uh, male? Yes, they are all male. Oh, good. And um, are they single? Uh, we have uh, one single attorney. I see. I see. So one single, what's his first name? His his first name, sir? Yes. I find that an unusual question. Well, I know some attorneys in the northern suburbs, and I just thought maybe I knew him. Oh, well, his first name is Jacob. Is what? Jacob. Oh, Jacob. Jacob. Right. Oh, I know a Jacob. Jacob, 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 Jacob. Are they? No, I don't believe I do. No, Jacob. Well, what does uh, these seven attorneys... Yes. What uh, could you describe, maybe, what they look like? What do they look like? Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> this is highly unusual, and excuse me for laughing. Oh, that's all right. You, uh, there's no problem. It doesn't bother me a bit. Well, we have three gentlemen that are about six foot tall. Oh. We have about three gentlemen that are six foot tall or better. Uh -huh. We have two gentlemen that are about five foot three or four. Five foot three or four. Right. That would be perfect for a little friend of mine. My um, my roommate, my roomie Philip, is here, and uh, Philip uh, is also a legal secretary. Yes, Stuart, I am. And uh, he is then interested also in a position. Okay. With your company, and uh, uh, if I may just say so, Philip, uh, I was just talking to the office manager of Terry, who was telling me that one of the attorneys is five foot three. Oh. Now you are. You're just. Uh, that, you're yes, I am uh, five one. Uh, yes. So uh, my roomie. Philip is 5'1". That would be perfect. Are there more openings for us, Stuart? I don't know, Terry. Are there more openings? Are there more openings? No, we have just one opening. Just one opening. Oh. Oh, that's a shame. Well, well you work so hard, Stuart. I, I think you ought to have Well, it. we do like to work the in... The first name is Stuart? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Yes. We, we, we do like to work in tandem. In tandem. Mm-hmm. I see. Well, we don't have a need for two. We well, only need one that's full-time legal. Certainly. Stuart, are you going to get that job? Well, I don't know. I'm talking to Terry here. And I was just inquiring about their office staff. You bet you always get the job. No, no. It's who gets to the phone first. Huh? Let's not get an argument in front of Terry here. This, uh, uh, would you just hang up your line, please? Yes. Thank you very much. All right. Now, uh, uh, Terry? Yes? Do you have a dress code? Address code? Yes, we do. You do. Basically, we do uh, like they have collars. I mean, collars on the shirts. Well, I wear collars on my shirts. All right. Well, I'm saying more or less when you mention address code. Yes, some somewhat of a formal. Name. I don't dress dress queerly, you know. Well, I didn't say queerly, sir. Well, no, I know you didn't, but you're indicating you were collar. Of course, you were collar. Uh, no, there is. Well, I'm trying to differentiate between casual and dress. Oh. I refer to casual as collar collarless. <laughs> Colorless. I'm wearing a lavender suit and pale blue shirt right now with a yellow tie. Lavender blue suit. No. <laughs> if the if the office were in the middle of a flower shop, I would blend right in. <laughs> You're cute. You really are cute. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. A lot of the guy, a lot of the people t say that to me. Well, I don't doubt it, and I would really like to meet you. I really, really now, would. You know, I don't understand this this conversation I'm having with you at all. All right, now, we are employing one legal secretary, not two. Terry uh, just said, Philip, that uh, there is just one legal secretary, not two. Oh, boo-hoo. <laughs> Don't boo-hoo me, Philip. Stuart, I, I want a job. He does I need... I want to work with you, Philip. Tell him I have a friend who might be interested. <sighs> there is a shortage of legal secretaries. Well, now, there you go saying short again, and I would tell you Philip's very sensitive. He's only I, I, I said there's a shortage of... You said short. I heard you say that, Terry. Was she taking shots at me? No, I don't think she's taking shots. <laughs> Yes. I would love to meet you. Get away from my man. Now, wait just a moment, Philip. Did you, I'm sorry, Stuart, Terry. I heard advances. She's not making advances no, to me. This is a 
big curtain call, She's other than that, that Mr. Curtain's voice <laughs> is a little bit more heartier. <laughs> yeah, just a very little bit. <laughs> Terry, how you doing? Oh, you got to be killing. Oh! <laughs> yeah, how are you, Terry? Oh, I just love this. <laughs> I just love you. Well, t- <laughs> well, so does Philip. <laughs> oh, yeah, Philip was fine. Let Terry, me... we're going to send you to dinner uh, for allowing us to do this. Where are we going to send our dinner, Sterling Heights? Uh, that's right, Jake. Dinner for two at Pinard. And Sterling, thanks for doing the Philip impression. You're welcome. You did a wonderful, thank wonderful you, job. Thank okay, you thank you very much, Terry. Have a nice day. Oh, same to you. So long. Bye. <laughs> Hi. Hi there. Um, I was wanted to ask the Bagman if they have Friday it the 13th. It's time now for Ask no, the Bagman. No, it is not time for the, the regular program feature. program that thousands of people want to hear. And now to introduce me, here is Casey introducing me for Ask the Bagman. Casey. All right, Casey. Ladies one and time. gentlemen, now on Z95.5, a special feature of the Dick Burton Show. Yeah. Yeah. One special. that hopefully will not last too long. That's here's right. Ask the Bagman with your host, Bagman. Okay, what is your question, sir? Okay, well, since it's Ask the Bagman time, I was wondering if they had Friday the 13th where he comes from. And if he has any hints to ward off bad luck, I've already burnt the breakfast, the cat's gotten out, and I wondered if he had any hints to stop this bad luck. Well, first of all, you should not have a cat for breakfast. That is very bad luck. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, secondly, we do have Friday the 13th on India, but we have it on Thursdays. Always on Thursdays. Why ruin the end of a week? <laughs> mm-hmm. I see. Okay, well, a good point. Thank you very much, Bagman, and thank you for your question, sir. <laughs> thank you very much. Also, do not step on an axe. Huh? Why, yes. why is that? Well, let me ask you why. That was the question. Ask the bagman. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank hey, you. Colleen, Thank what you. is Bye. this after all I've done for your wedding? Colleen, uh, perhaps Colleen has a question to ask the bagman. Come on over here and sit She's on my seat. She's getting sheet. married in uh, two weeks, uh, no, Colleen. Fifteen uh, days, according to you guys. That's right. What's bothering you? What are you uh, perhaps a little uptight, nervous about regarding uh, Brian, your wedding, your wedding night, your honeymoon, yes. whatever? And it I'm going to ask the bagman for that? That's well, correct. It is You're sitting on his lap right now. You might as well ask him a question. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Boy, you're putting on a little weight there. (laughs) No, actually, I've been losing weight, but that's why I'm sitting here with a donut, a big donut. Mm -hmm. Um, Right. You're you're sitting on a big nut. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he is a big nut. I'll tell you. Now you know why we don't. I wanted to clarify that one there. Now you know why we don't do ass the ankles. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I think we should stop this feature right now. We're going to move on to, uh, I say, what in trouble, play a record. And.